Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 40. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Alright, so we are now here for the uh, Class F pre noughties Asian Tour. So this is for cars before 2000. Um, we're taking the Honda Civic 94, the 1.5 something. Uh, starting off with Sakuba, Suzuka, Twin Ring, Suzuka. We got two Suzuka circuits. Interesting. Uh, and then the Cuba again, but the full version. Interesting, but okay, I'll take it. By all means, I think it's visually stunning. Like the quality of some of those um, car models. They are pretty good looking models. Um, and when you... Um, take into account the fact that they're being put in these cinematic backgrounds, a little bit like Gran Turismo Escapes almost. Um, it does seem to be suiting the style of the game. It looks very good. Very Gran Turismo inspired. Like old school, like GT3, GT4, that kind of stuff. It all depends when they release it. Because they can't release it near Car X Drift, uh, Car X Street, because they're too similar. That'd just be a fail. But they also can't release it too late. People get bored. Can't release it too early. Game will be too buggy. Yeah, it's a tough one. Was acceptable in the 80s. It was acceptable at the time. I got love for you if you were born in the 80s. The 80s. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try the demo out because there's no harm in it. And if it does feel good. Then I'll buy it, because it, it seems to be like a small development studio. I don't think there's many developers working on it by the looks of it, so if it's a good game, I'll, I'll get it. Support the devs. Yeah, it was acceptable in the 80s. Yeah, it was I do like the colour of this car actually. It's quite a nice uh quite a nice looking colour. Yeah, fair enough. I'm looking forward to um October time. Because uh, October is roughly when WRC Generations is going to be coming out. I tease. Wow. Joe, one thing I really wish uh, and hope that the next WRC game does. As much as I like the idea of having like a yearly game, WRC 23, 24 for each season, 
I would like for EA to use the WRC series to sort of experiment a little bit. And maybe even just create WRC, the experience. And just basically have one game. So you buy WRC and that comes with... They could do it as like a three or a four year project, for example. Uh, I, th I think four or five years would be good. We'll get, get onto it in a second. Uh, Glitch, what is up? Welcome. How are you today? Hello there. Aquamag. Um, but yeah. If they could do like a... Oh, so you buy the game, you get the 2023 season. Then, when 2024 season comes out... And they update it with like an extra stage for all the stages, all the rallies that have already existed. So you get a little bonus content for all the rallies that you already have. But then you can also have, if there's a new rally, you get an entire new rally. You buy that DLC pack for 25 quid. So you have the base game that's like 50. And then it's 25 quid for every year. So granted, if you're buying the whole thing... Later on, it will cost you like £100 for the game. Might be a lot for some people. Obviously, they wouldn't offer like a... Uh, what's it called? Like a season pass. Oh, I've accidentally pressed the rewind button. But I think that would be good. Similar to how Hitman does it. You know, as they added a game, it was like... Oh yeah, you've got all the old content still here. But instead, you just buy the base game, and then you add the seasons that you want added as additional content. And that way... And they can still do, like, additional DLC cars for, like, I don't know, the Audis from the past years, whatever. Because let's be honest, I don't care if a game is 150 gigabytes as long as it gives me 150 gigs worth of content. Doing good, got my baby based aqua mech fix for the day. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to live down the baby face thing, am I? This is why I told my grandparents I am not shaving it off again. They would have to pay me to shave this shit off. I'll do it as like a donation as well. Like if someone donates a hundred quid, I'll shave shave it all off there and then. Every time someone does it. Cause why not? <laughs> so we got a 50% discount on ignition upgrades. Nice. Time for the super slow Honda to come back. I still can't believe, right? We have driven pretty much the fastest cars in this game. And have also driven... Well, yeah. We went from the some of the fastest cars in the game and the fastest cars in the game. The R1 cars. Straight to F cars. That's what I love about this game, though. Progression is killer in this game. Nice variety as you're progressing through. Granted, I'm doing it in order, but even doing it in order, there is a variety. Stand down on me, get to the it's just a matter of time. Not bad. Coming. How long did it take to actually go around the full of this track? Because, I mean, it's taken us two minutes to go around this thing. Nearly. When you work it out, the... Both circuits, both, like, parts of Suzuka basically just joined together. So when you think about it, when you join the two together, 
the two lap times should pretty much add up to be the full full time. So you got a minute 50 for this. It was the same minute 45 that we're probably about to do. On that side of the track is probably a minute 30. You're probably looking at about three minutes a lap for this circuit with this car. Just a matter of time. Is this thing still front wheel drive? Ding, dong, ding, dong. When the blood dries in my veins, and my heart feels no more pain. This is a gym. It's also pissing down outside, and it's probably going to be thunderstorms again. I kid you not, it has rained three nights in a row. Thank goodness that fucking heat wave's gone that we had about two or three weeks ago. Go, 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 you fat pig. Something happened and I've never found before. I love how this thing is struggling so much to get past 100 miles an hour and just like do anything beyond 100. Dragging me away from heaven. Still. My hair is fucked right now. I'm like trying to move it over so that it's like tidy and it just looks. Messy. <laughs> My eyes stop thinking. Love a good bit of uh, Plan B and chasing status. How are those cars in last place that much slower? That's what I want to know. We've got to wait and see what happens when we get to level 46 as well. Because I'm hoping level 46 is a prototype body so I can go back to um, that episode 38 event. I think it's episode 38. Because uh, I am recording these out of order slightly. Just because of the fact that we had a bit of a hiccup. And I messed up. And I wasted 500 grand. 
So I'm hoping either to get a free car or get enough money to buy the car that I wanted to get. Because I fucked up. There we go. Saving ghost. We got 10 grand there. Not bad. And we are level two. We got a 50% discount on fuel system upgrades by AEM. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie. I think Xbox Game Pass has been lacking the past two years. Other than the fact that they've been releasing all their games on Game Pass day one, which I mean is fair enough. The actual content that Game Pass has been acquiring has been pretty mediocre. When you compare it to Sony's offering at the moment, which is offering stuff like the Yakuza series, you've got some WRC games, you've got... I don't even know. The list is so big. Ubisoft Plus games now included with PlayStation Plus, so... Um, pretty much all the Assassin's Creed's, I believe. Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, the works. It's honestly amazing. But a lot of people will see, like, oh, PlayStation Plus is just nothing. It's like, people don't realize that Xbox Game Pass was made to basically counter PS Now, right? And then what they did to make it extremely complicated, they then made a version of Game Pass that came with Xbox Gold, right? Cool, Leo. That's cool. And EA Play and all that. Now that Sony has finally tried to make stuff make more sense, because people were, like, at any console person was too, in like, dumb. They had no intelligence whatsoever to realize that PS Now, if you buy PS Now and PS Plus, you basically have equivalent to Game Pass for cheaper. But uh, uh, Xbox people need a little more encouragement because of how dumb they can be sometimes <laughs> but um yeah they've made PS Plus now which I mean for PlayStation people that were used to you know PS Plus PS now it's now extremely complicated because it was like oh yeah you pay for you want a game subscription where you get games buy PS now Oh look, you want your monthly games and multiplayer? You buy PS Plus. Now it's all complicated. You got PS Plus, PS Plus Premium, PS Plus Essential, PS Plus whatever. But they still have better games. Oh, that brings me on to another point. Um, I honestly had one of the most, like, wow, you're such a moron, stop talking moments on YouTube the other day. So, I've obviously uninstalled TikTok because TikTok's quality of content. TikTok's just cringe. It's weird. But the problem is, when you go onto TikTok, it always finds something that will pique your interest. Whether it's shit, and you're like, what is this moron doing? Cringe, and you're like, ha, this is funny in a cringe way. Or utter shit, right? What the fuck are you doing? Get back, you prick. Um, so I uninstalled TikTok, and I'm basically just sticking with... Uh, YouTube Shorts. Because YouTube Shorts quality is fucking terrible. So I'll sit and I'll watch Shorts for about 10 minutes and then that's it, done. 
So I get my kick out of like short videos for the day. Whereas TikTok, I could sit for literally like three hours quite easily scrolling through because there was always something that would pique my interest. Either in a good way, bad way, whatever. Um... But yeah, when you... So there was this YouTube short. Getting back to... I'm going on so many tangents today. If we go back to the original topic, I had um, seen a... Uh, what's it called? It's basically a YouTube short of someone just telling telling you about news. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Chill bloke. Um, and he was like... Sony is has revealed the PlayStation controller, and I put on a comment right saying that this controller is going to be absolutely awesome. The fact that you can replace the uh, thumbsticks when they start to have stick drift, right? And I kid you not, there were morons that were like, "That's not how stick drift works." Like, what? I didn't even explain how stick drift worked and they turned it into like a trying to teach me about stick drift. I know how fucking stick drift works. <laughs> this guy was like, that's not how stick drift works. And then one of them was like, you can do that on Xbox though with their series controller. Or their elite controller. Whatever. <laughs> I was just like, no you can't. If you have a soldering iron and a knowledge of knowing how to solder a new thumbstick into your controller, then sure. you got to take the whole fucking thing apart to do it. Yeah, this guy was adamant. Like, he knew that Xbox had all these features and that the PlayStation... I'm just sat there like... And then w another person... <laughs> like, three different topics. How unintelligent... Like... Honestly, I have no problem with what platform you use, but it just seems like the general consensus is that people who play Xbox consoles do seem to be a younger generation that lack any form of intelligence. Like, by all means, if you're an intelligent person that plays Xbox, I don't care. It's just if you're a dumbass, I do care. But not because you play PlayStation or Xbox, you're just a dumbass. But yeah, this final one was just saying um, how Xbox, uh, Sony is just copying Xbox. Which is kind of funny because Xbox copied Scuff <laughs> with their controller design. Which again, is very funny. <laughs> and an Xbox person will never notice that until... Oh look, did you know that Scuff made these controllers before Xbox did? No? You're fucking blind. Uh, I got a 50% discount on differential upgrades by cars. Nice. That thing's gonna be free soon. I don't know what song I wanna listen to! Well, I can't hear this song, so clearly I want to listen to it, apparently. Oh, it's Foo Fighters. Yes, let's listen to this. This is a good song. <laughs> yeah, so they send us seven laps around here compared to four of the other Suzuki circuit. Why is seven laps around here? It's not that much shorter, is it? Well, it's shorter, but not that much, right? Hang on. Zeno, my man, what is up? <laughs> Definitely first. Definitely. Ugh. Bug trying to fly into my eye. See, again, proving my point, moths are evil little bastards. Blind to your eyes. Do, do, 
I'm not gonna lie though, when I get, um... Uh, yeah, my day's been good, Zeno. Thank you so much for asking, man. How's your day been? Um, but yeah, when that new PS5 controller gets announced, uh, not announced, like, release date, whatever, I'm hoping they, they do release it some point November time. Because I know I'm going to be wanting to buy one. Like, the paddles on the back, I know they're sort of a gimmicky thing in a way. Um, but when it comes to me playing stuff like WRC, it just frees up my um, bumper buttons on the top for something else. Because I much prefer to use... Um, what's it called? I prefer a standard grip. I don't like the claw, claw grip. So it means that it's extremely difficult for me to, like, constantly be on the throttle, the brake, and then also try to turn on, like, wipers and headlights and all that stuff. So if I can just use the back paddles to do that, problem solved. I say I scored today. It was pretty boring, but it was good to see my friends again. It's good. Good to hear, man. She said... into Pendulum playing Gravity Rush. Gravity Rush? Is that that, um... It's that game with that woman and that cat, isn't it? It was originally made for the PS Vita. Right? Yeah. They made two versions, didn't they? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Not bad. Do you know what I'm kind of disappointed with um, in the PS Plus collection? So, on the website, it shows that WRC 10 is part of the collection, but when you actually look to try and install it, uh, it's not part of the collection anymore. So, they've clearly removed it and not actually changed it on the website, which sucks. But, I do need to play the Spider-Man games. At some point. But obviously, uh, on the, basically on my Twitch and my YouTube, I just only do racing stuff at the moment. But, um, yeah. I find it weird, because WRC 9 um, was added to the PS Plus collection. Um, for a bit. I don't know whether it was 9 or 8, actually. I think it might have been 8. But the fact is, 10 wasn't even on there for more than... 3 or 4 months. So, very confusing. Yeah, Miles Morales is a good one. I got the PS5, so I, I can play Spider-Man... I don't know why, but the Game of the Year edition of Spider-Man, Miles, uh, Spider-Man, 
the 2018 one. Doesn't actually come with the PS5 version. Which is really confusing because you've got Miles Morales PS5 edition. But they don't have the PS5 edition of the Spider-Man game. Because the Miles Morales game does come with a PS5 version of the Spider-Man. So I'm confused why they don't offer it. The PS5 version. But I don't know. It's what it is, I guess. I love this gym. Seven minutes for that race, and we're catching up with last place a little bit, so which is kind of surprising for an F class car, but you know. 12 grand. I will take my rewards, thank you very much. And we got a 20% discount on valves and displacement upgrades by HPD. Bora is that, um, what's it called? They've got an Amazon show, right? I think. But Bora is that, um, Satcha Baron Cohen character, right? The same guy that did Ali G. I have a chair. I have a chair. King in the castle. <laughs> this is my neighbor. He is pain in my asshole. I buy a cat. He must have a cat. I have a front door, he must buy a front door. I get a new chair, he cannot afford. <laughs> I love it, it's so good. I still think Ali G is such a brilliant, brilliant fucking character. 2003 documentary. Yeah, he did, um... I think it was 2001 he did Ali G. Um, in the house. That movie. Honestly, it's legendary. One of my favourite jokes of all time is that the kid where he calls, um... What, one of the kids is like, I think he said like, oh, you're all dead. Like, I think Ali G goes like, for something. I can't remember the whole thing. But I know this kid next starts crying. And the kid next to him he's, just goes and calls him. <laughs> fucking homo. And then Ali G just goes, hey, we don't say that. It's Batsy boy. <laughs> Just the way that he says it. It's just fucking brilliant. Such a good... Honestly. Ali G. Ah, uh, and the scene with the blind guy that's um, cleaning the fence posts as well. Ah. <laughs> uh, that's fucking... Oh, no. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch it now. I think it's on Netflix. I'm gonna have to watch Ali G in the house now. I love the Renault 5 race on straight, accelerating up to 60 kilometers like it's fast and frustrated. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't really, um... Zohan? Who's Zohan? Running on... Bravado. Do I have been watching, though? Chat. I have been... Such an English name. Ah, yeah, no worries. 
I've been watching, binge watching, literally. Um, I'm on season eight, but I've been watching through the entire of the Big Bang Theory again. In fact, no, not again. This is the first time I've ever watched them all in order. Like for five or six years, I've watched like an episode here or there when they've been aired on like free TV. But obviously, Sorry was on Amazon Prime and I was like, let's watch it. You don't mess with the Zohan. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> Three out of five. Three out of five is not enough. Same mistake. Queuing up for some more junk food. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. They're getting so much younger. Why can't you be? Well, European bastard, child of guilt and shame. Code name Barber. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, that's the one thing I find really weird about movies is they get a completely different name when they're in a different country. Obviously, like, I understand they need to be translated into something else that's sort of native to the language. That makes sense. But, like, the entire name, when you translate it back into English, is just something different. It's similar with, like, the MotorStorm games, um, and specifically the PSP version. You have MotorStorm Arctic Edge, which is what it was known as to English-speaking countries. But the Japanese version was actually called Raging Ice. Um, which is weird. The game is exactly the same, though. has the same song list. Same everything, it's just got Japanese text. And it's called Raging Ice. It's even weirder, the fact that the actual game um, has the exact same identifier. Um, the Japanese version of the game has the same identifier as the European and the American versions. Which means if you install with an emulator, if you install the English version of a game, or of um, MotorStorm, you can then install the Japanese version and continue your save, but in Japanese. Which is very strange. Not a lot of games do that on PSP. Most of the time, they have a completely separate identifier. So, uh, Hans, where can I watch it? Can I watch it on Amazon Prime? Because if so, then I... Sure. I'll watch it on holiday, I guess. Do, 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 do. I got downloaded a shit ton to watch while I'm on the plane. Four and a half hour flight. It's gonna be fun. We got eleven grand. Woohoo! We got twenty grand in bonuses. Not bad. We gotta get to level 46 soon though. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.